We're in the middle of the R&D process of my new show, Drag Addicts. I wanted to write a show about the world of drag for as long as I can remember. I was a major drag addict back in the early 90s, because I'm really old. And in the last few years, I've become very intrigued by how drag has become very much part of the mainstream. When I first started writing the show, I thought it might be a verbatim piece, as I really wanted to write something that was based on research and interviews. But as with all projects, the show started to take on a life of its own. And I soon realised that I wanted to create characters and stories of my own and use the interviews and research to inform the writing and make sure that the piece was as authentic and representative as possible. Just think about it as a posh version of Facebook Live. So now we have, amongst others, four very distinct and fabulous drag personas. We have Miss Dolly Bird, Winnie Bago, Roxy Von Clitterbang, and our drag king, Arthur Sixpence, who have all come together to share their stories. Today is really exciting as we're experimenting with the makeup and some of the costumes that we might use in the show. So much of drag is about the visuals. And while the show is mainly about what goes on behind the makeup, we really thought it was important to start creating these looks so that our performers can get a feel for what the makeup and the costumes might add to their characters and characterisations. We've worked with these characters for a while now, developing the individual stories and the text, but to actually start putting on the makeup and costumes and see these characters come to life is really exciting for the actors and for the whole team. I still find it highly amusing that my dad thought that I was distracted by their bus jiggling about. Which in a weird sort of way, I was. I was mesmerised by everything about Charlie's Angels. Mainly because I wanted to be one. It was Easter, and I wanted to wear my best jacket for the service at church. Make a bit of an effort, you know? It's very colourful. Big flowers, green and blue and orange. All my favourite colours. My son hates it. He says it makes me look like a bag of licorice all sorts. Cheeky thing. Anyway, I unzip the bag, and I notice it smells a bit funny. Quite a nice smell, floral. I think it could be from one of the lavender bags I put in the bottom of my wardrobe. But it's not really a lavender smell. I put the jacket on and I'm tidying myself up in the mirror and I'm still trying to work out what the smell is. And then I notice there's a smudge on the colour. The colour is white so it really stands out. It's this deep red like lipstick. Now. I would never wear a colour like that. It wouldn't suit me at all. I like a nice dusty pink, you know? Never red. Far too slutty. I like a drag name to be a pun. That's the old fashioned way. So is your name a pun then? Dolly Bird. Dolly Bird. I don't get it. I just thought your last name was Bird. You're too young to know what a Dolly Bird is. What's your full name? <gasps> Roxy Von Glitterbang. How could I forget? I think it makes me sound like a countess. A right countess. It's of their upcoming shows. And I nearly have a heart attack because right there in the middle of it is what looks like our Mavis. Same hair, same cheekbones. Come on, the lights have changed. We can cross. Is that your Auntie Mavis on that poster? What would Auntie Mavis be doing on her poster in a gay bar? Come on, cross. I see the funny side. We laugh about it all through the buffet. I didn't really think anything of it. It was just someone who looks like our Mavis, my twin sister. Of course, later, when I connected the dots, the face in the poster, it wasn't a Mavis look-alike. It was him in drag. I think we should set some ground rules. Like what? No illnesses. Let's keep acts to a minimum. They've come for a good night out after all. Oh, yeah, good idea. And no bloody coming out stories. Well, that's fine by me. I'm straight. <coughs> well, most of the time. Well, a coming out story's not a thing anymore. They were, they were quite They're minimal. so 1995. Well, like I say, my era. I haven't really got one. My nan and me, uh, me mum knew I was gay before I did. They were thrilled when they found out. Good! No coming out stories. So you won't want to hear the story of how my auntie Jean walked in on me sucking off the milkman on my 21st birthday then. No! no. Suit yourselves. I don't really know who I am without drag. 
Roxy is everything I want to be. Well, mostly. I'm still working on her. I still get very scared when I'm being Roxy, but not as much when I'm just me. It's funny, cos I know I am Roxy and Roxy is me, but when I don't have my dragon, I just feel like I fade away. The show's going to be a slightly anarchic mashup of play, cabaret, stand-up comedy and drag show. We like to call it a glamorous shambles. It'll explore what lies behind the makeup and the sparkles of the drag world. And look at what drag means to the people who do it. Their families, their friends, their associates and the world at large. It's going to be a funny, filthy and fabulous night out.